Hi there, welcome back to our customer corner video series. Today, I am going to be talking about filtering records using a Lambda function. And you may be wondering why I'm using a Lambda function. And the reason being is that our data in our database table is saved a little bit different than what you might be used to. So I'm gonna make sure to show you that. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk about the example that we are going through today. So if you can imagine having a CARS website and in this CARS website, you want to allow your users to filter different CARS based on make, body style, year, and such. Now over in our CAR database table, we can see here that all of the attributes for each of these CAR records are saved in one singular array. So in a different scenario, each of these tags would be saved in their own field. So we may have a tag for the color or the year or the body style. But here, everything is saved in one place. That's where it gets a little bit more complicated. And that is why we're using a Lambda function. So let's go to our API endpoint. In here, we are taking in a JSON object. And I want to talk a little bit about how this is structured so that you can get a sense on how we are going to be filtering. Let's go to our whiteboard and I can show you here. So in this example, the user is looking for cars that are SUVs or sedans. That's what this group right here represents. This second group here is basically saying that they also want these cars to be the color black or blue or silver. And then they want these cars to be the years 2022 or 2023. So that's basically what we are going to be writing out in our Lambda function. Let's go to our API point and I can show you all of the steps that we are taking to filter out these cars. So first I am querying all the records from the car database table. If I run this, we can see that we get an array of objects. Each object is a car record. Next up, I am doing a get values from object. Um, function here. And the reason why I'm doing this is because our input is currently an object and I want to turn that into an array. I basically want to grab all of the values and put them in an array so that I can iterate over it. So if I run this, I can show you what user tags looks like. So now we have an array and then we have all of the value arrays here that we were getting from our input. And then our Lambda function comes next. Here is where it starts to get a little bit trickier, but I'm going to walk you through exactly what is happening here. So in this first line here, what I am doing is I am creating a function and this function is going to be filtering the cars based on the user's criteria. So I'm just going to add some pseudocode on here so that you can follow along. So that is what we're doing. We're taking in two parameters. We're taking in the cars and the user tags. The cars, if you remember, that is the array that contains all of the cars from our car table. And then the user tag has all of those value arrays that contain the features that the user wants to see from these cars. Next up, we are going to be looking at each car. So we're accessing the cars array. We're looking at each car. And then what we are doing is we are filtering this, right? And the way that we are doing that is that we are, we're checking all of the feature groups. And by feature groups, I mean all of those value arrays from our input. So for each car, we're checking all of the groups of features, those value arrays that the, in, that the user is interested in. 
And then what we are doing is we are matching. So each of, um, so each of those value arrays, that function looks to see that at least one value in that array, the value array is present in the tags field in the cars array. So I'm going to just save this really quick because I want to show you exactly what I mean. So here we have these value arrays, right? So we're checking each of these and we're checking each of our cars. And we want to make sure that at least one value from each of these arrays is present in our tags field. And we're accessing that tags field from this cars variable here. So we're checking this to make sure that it is in here. So that is what is happening there. Let me open this back up. Okay, so let's keep taking a look at this Lambda function here. So then basically what is then happening is that, let me add the pseudocode here. A car must have at least one matching feature from every group of value arrays um, to be considered a match. Like I mentioned before, if a car does match that criteria, they are going to be placed in an array. So then what we're going to have is going to be an array of all the cars that match that criteria, right? Next up in this line here, what we're doing is that we are actually using the function. So up here, we just created it. And then here we're actually using it and we're saving the result in a variable called filtered cars. Um, now the parameters that we're providing here are the cars variable that we created in CNO that represents all of the records in our car table and then the user tags variable. Now we can access variables outside of this Lambda function by using the money sign dot bar and then the name of that variable. Then finally, we are returning that result that we are getting from calling the function. I'm going to go ahead and save this. In our Lambda function here, we have the variable name uh, filtered cars. That is what this is returning. And then that is what is being returned to our front end. So let's go ahead and take a look. If I go ahead and run this. All of the cars here in my results should be the type SUV or sedan, as well as be the colors black, blue, or silver, and be the year 2022. So let's take a look. We have an SUV that's black, 2022. That is correct. We have an SUV that is silver, and then the year 2022, that is also correct. And then a sedan with the year 2022 and the color silver. So that is working properly. And that is how you do filtering with a Lambda function. I hope that this is helpful. Please let me know if you have any other questions and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.